Welcome to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast, your guide to future tech trends and innovation in a language you understand. Now, over to your host, Neil Hughes. Welcome back to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast. If you listen to one episode all year, I implore you to listen to this one today of my daily tech podcast, because after 650 episodes, I really did walk away quite inspired after listening to these stories about a man named Patrick McGovern. So much of what he stood for really, really resonated with me. But just to set the scene, IDG is the world's largest technology media company, and they help their global audience make the smartest technology purchasing decisions. I grew up with the Windows for Dummies book, Sequel for Dummies, and in fact any tech subject was covered by those books, who were all made by IDG. Essentially, many of the IDG books transformed how we understand the enormous potential of computers and actually started to think about how they could change the world. And here is where it gets interesting. Founder Patrick McGovern was a pioneer in the information technology industry. In his own way, he was equally as vital as Steve Jobs or Bill Gates, but he never sought the spotlight and many of his contributions have been overlooked. Pat McGovern is the man who turned IDG into a 3 billion technology media and venture capital empire. But he's also the eternal optimist that put people and making a difference first, but kept himself in the shadows. I think there's something quite beautiful about that. Glenn Rifkin is an author and contributor to the New York Times who worked with Patrick McGovern very closely. And he's sharing his legacy so others can learn from this inspiring man. It really is a beautiful story that really resonated with me. So buckle up and hold on tight as I beam your ears all the way into the heart of Silicon Valley so we can speak with Glenn Rifkin, author of Future Forward. So a massive warm welcome to the show, Glenn. Can you tell the listeners a little about who you are and what you do? Sure. Thanks, Neil, for having me here. Um, I am a journalist and author. I have been a business journalist for over 40 years in the U.S., and uh, a lot of that time I've spent contributing to the New York Times. Uh, I've also written and published about a dozen books before this one, and uh, I have written for many different publications over the years, but my focus has has been business uh, through all of that, and there was a point in the 1980s when I actually worked at IDG, which uh, we can talk about as we go along. Fantastic. Now, I'm glad you mentioned that because one of the the main reasons I invited you on the show today was to talk about your fascinating and inspiring book, Future Forward. Because when we think about tech visionaries, and we speak to them about them a lot on this show, many will think of big personalities such as Steve Jobs, Bill Gates, etc. But there is a man called Pat McGovern, that never sought the spotlight, and he's been overlooked for the contribution that he's made to the tech industry. So can you just set the scene a little and tell both me and the listeners a little more about Pat McGovern, the man who turned IDG into a three billion technology, media and venture capital empire? Well, it's um, it's really the essence of what this book is about. Uh, Pat McGovern was, as you just described, a visionary who early on in the 1960s Uh, saw something that others didn't see, usually the formula for great success from entrepreneurs. And what he understood was that information technology was going to be a world-changing industry. And he also understood that somebody needed to sort of tell the story of this industry. There would be the doers who were making things. In those days, IBM was the 800-pound gorilla. But over time, he knew there would be other players. But what he envisioned was... Uh, a thirst for knowledge, for uh, fair-minded, uh, deep research by very talented people who could tell the story of this industry as it was unfolding. So he set out to build International Data Group, a, a company that was based in the Boston area in the United States. And while he started with one publication, Computer World, he eventually, w- with a, a very clear path ahead, decided to make this a global entity. And he eventually had uh, publications in nearly 100 countries, um, uh, 300 publications, several hundred uh, websites as it became more of a digital thing. And he was responsible for building amazing brands, not just Computer World, there was PC World and Mac World and Info World, CIO Magazine. Um, I don't know how popular the Four Dummies books are in other countries, but in the the U.S., they became 
ubiquitous. Uh, you couldn't walk into a bookstore without seeing there the, literally hundreds of titles. So he was uh, on top of this real revolution. And people uh, at the time, you know, were focused on the big names like a Steve Jobs, like Bill Gates, later on Mark Zuckerberg and Jeff Bezos. Pat was not a spotlight seeker. He was fine being off on the sidelines. It was his personality that he wanted the spotlight on the brands that he created. His, his goal was to spread information about information technology, and it didn't require him to be a superstar or a celebrity to do it. The people in the industry, however, these big names that I just mentioned, they all knew Pat really well. They interacted with him and they truly admired him. If you look at our book, when you when you would get it, you'd see there are blurbs from Bill Gates and some of the other big players because they knew the importance of a, of a Pat McGovern. And uh, my job, my my goal with this is to let people know what a what a visionary and what an uh, incredible entrepreneur he really was. It's a fantastic story. It really is. And I believe you worked at IDG. So can you tell me a little bit more about your time there and the, inspira and the inspiration behind you actually wanted to make sure this story was told and shared so we can all learn from his journey too? Good question. Um, I joined Computer World in 1983. Uh, I didn't know a computer from a washing machine. But uh, as a young journalist, it looked like a great opportunity to get an experience in this, you know, nascent industry. 1983 was a pretty amazing time in the industry because the personal computer had emerged as the next major platform. So there I was in this place, uh, surrounded by the excitement of the industry, seeing all these luminaries and getting to meet them and interview them uh, ahead of some of the general business publications. And it was, you know, just a, a, a head spinning kind of experience to be in the middle of that. Um, the 80s were quite a time in the in the industry. So uh, it, this was a front row seat uh, at the ed, you know, tip of my keyboard. There I was writing about some of the hot issues of the day for business people. Uh, it was a time when the data processing manager, as they used to be called, sort of morphed into the CIO and became an important business person, not just a technology person. So it was an incredible experience to be able to do that. And as I worked there, I got to meet and, and get to know Pat McGovern. And within IDG, within this very big co company that was growing fast, was this magical figure who was larger than life, literally. He was almost six foot four, he was huge. And you could hear his laughter and, and the sound of his voice from two or three rooms away when he came into the building. Um, he was definitely like uh, a Paul Bunyan character to, to many of us. And so to, to just get a chance to be in his presence and work with him was an incredible experience. And it made me realize that I was lucky enough to be um, experiencing this industry in some ways through his eyes. So can you also expand a little on how this visionary entrepreneur actually, well, actually foresaw a global market for information about information technology? Oh, you know, it was, it was just the classic story of the brilliant entrepreneur who sees opportunity where others don't. Yeah. And people laughed at him and scoffed at him. In 1967, he decided that what the industry really needed was a weekly newspaper that would actually provide real in-depth uh, data and news about an industry that was about to explode. And people laughed at him. They said, there's not enough computers in the world to justify an audience for a publication like this. Uh, but he was, he was undaunted by that. He said, no, this is going to work. Uh, people have nowhere to turn for real hands-on information about technology. They would get you know, literature from the vendors themselves, and that was just advertising. It wasn't going to really give them an unbiased source. People wanted to know, what are their contemporaries doing with this equipment? This is all new stuff. These are room-sized computers, lots of money involved. Are we using it right? Who trains the people? How do we know we're getting the most bang for our buck? So here's a publication that can talk about that. We'll send reporters out. They'll meet the users. They'll meet the vendors. They'll ask questions and get answers to these questions. And, you know, lo and behold, there was a huge audience for it, an audience just hungry for this kind of information. And within weeks of the first launch of Computer World, he had 20,000 subscribers signed up. And by the way, 
there were some magazines in the industry. There was one called Datamation for, for some of your older listeners. Um, but those were given away for free. It was called controlled circulation. But Pat had learned a valuable lesson as a younger guy that if you want people to uh, believe in the value of something, you have to charge money for it. You have to give it the, the, the feel that they're paying for something important. So he had a paid circulation for Computer World and people were happy to pay for it. And before long, you know, there were millions of people reading Computer World every week. And that, from what I've read about him, he really did seem to silence his critics on a regular basis as well, because I also believe he was one of the first Western publishers amongst the first Western businesses to actually start doing business in places such as China. Uh, can you tell me more about how he silenced his critics who scoffed at him when he, forced, when he actually foresaw a huge population hungry for knowledge about technology and everyone else just didn't get it? Uh, you know, it's it's so classic when, when uh, you look at, the great entrepreneurs in technology, and you think of what we are, are living in today, those were decisions made by really brilliant people who just you know, saw the world differently and understood um, that you have to take a risk. Sometimes you'll fail, but more times than not, you'll succeed. And you bring up China, which is a great story uh, from Pat McGovern, that in 1978, he sort of snuck into Beijing, literally, got himself um, into the city for one day and wandered around Beijing, which at the time was just coming out of the Maoist um, cultural revolution. There were about 8 million people in Beijing. And just to give a contrast today, there's about 22 million people there. But the city was, it, it was awakening. And he felt it when he was walking down the streets. He looked into bookstores and he saw people clamoring for books and, and newspapers and information. And he said, this is a population that one day will embrace technology. They're going to want to know. And we should be the first in here to do it. So two years later, he went back to China. He forged a relationship with a government ministry. He set up China Computer World. Within six months, it was publishing against all odds because there was such bureaucracy and people felt, you know, you're out of your mind. You're never going to be able to do business in China. And he said, no, I, I see an opportunity here. And lo and behold, IDG became the pub publisher of choice in China over the, you know, the next decade, many decades to this day. It's still the main publisher in China. And, you know, at its heyday, millions of people were reading Compu China Computer World and the 40 other IDG publications in China. And Pat McGovern became a favored business person there. He was beloved by the Chinese uh, citizens who met him. The IDG employees there absolutely revered him. They named him the Lao Mai, which means uh, old and revered one. And he won awards and he was made an honorary citizen. And it was just a remarkable transition. He loved the culture. He respected the people. And that's, you know, the lesson that was learned from that, that you can do it if you're so inclined. He made 130 trips to China in the course of his lifetime. And that tells you a lot. It wasn't just lip service. He had his you know, wingtips on the ground and was willing to spend time there to make it work. And it, and it was a brilliant success. Wow. In, in so many ways, it feels it was completely ahead of his time. So can you also tell me about how he created a culture in which values and respect for employees was paramount? At a time where that wasn't uh, considered the norm, or far from it, was it? Absolutely. And and j just to sort of put this in context, the book, Future Forward, is actually a series of the leadership lessons that, that we sort of put together from Pat McGovern's career. So the idea of creating a culture of respect, um, it, it was just part of his DNA, uh, where most stereotypes of the <clears throat> kind of ruthless, take no prisoners businessman, the CEO, you know, who can't look at things uh, in any other way but the bottom line, it just wasn't him. He had a certain kindness and warmth for his employees that um, was the foundation for the culture. It was a very familial kind of place. Uh, he was actually known as Uncle Pat by the employees who, who just saw him as this sort of benevolent, you know, paternal figure to the whole company. And it was the and it was genuine. It wasn't some phony kind of put on. This was this was his feeling for how do you do well in business? Well, one of the keys is you treat your your employees 
um, the way that they should be treated. No, you know, they're not just numbers, they're actual people. And he, and he made that, he baked that into the company's DNA. Uh, I'll give you an example that is sort of legendary. And if you talk to any either current or former IDG employee, they'll tell you about this. At the holidays, Pat McGovern would go around to every office in the United States and he would stop and visit every single employee, whether they were at a desk, whether they were working in the loading dock or the production room. And he would stop and chat and then and he had a photographic memory. So he would remember almost every name of every person he ran into, which is a pretty compelling experience to have when you're a lower level employee that the CEO not only stops by, but he knows who you are. And then to top it off, he handed everybody an envelope with a bunch of cash in it as a Christmas bonus. And then he walked away to the next person, leaving the other person sitting there with their mouth sort of agape. Uh, almost disbelieving that this has just happened. The chairman of the board came to see me and he knows me and he thanked me for my contribution and he was uh, genuine about it. it, it the, the power that that would instill in an organization, the loyalty, the, the um, way that it motivated employees to want to do their best for him, it, it, it's incalculable. And to this day, when I was working on this book and talking to literally hundreds of people, I couldn't find anybody who could say a bad word about this guy. People loved him. And how many people love their CEOs? You know, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, it's almost unheard of. So it's, it's, uh, it's a remarkable testament that you can do with kindness what most leaders do with a, with a, you know, a harsh word and a, and a, and a dictate. And I, I think it was uh, really almost the central part of his legacy. And from what I've read as well, Pat McGovern was the very definition of the eternal optimist. So did you learn anything about that side of him when you were working there? Oh, yeah, it was it was clear that uh, he was the cheerleader. He was the main cheerleader. <laughs> he called himself the CEO, the, the chief uh, encouragement officer. <laughs> and and he um, he clearly made that uh, a key part of his day. He had uh, what we called the good news memos. And if you did, it was amazing, actually. I still have a bunch of these in my uh, possession. If you did something, uh, wrote an article that crossed his desk and he said, oh, wow, that's great. You would get a personal note from him on a piece of stationery. Now, you know, we're back in the days before email, but it would be a note with a rainbow on it and a big good news headline. And in it would be a, a personal note signed by him thanking you for something that you did, great article about such and such, and it would be signed Pat. And it was a little thing, and yet he sent out, I, I think somebody told me, 15 to 20 of those every single week, all over the world. And people would get those, and if you went to any IDG office in the world, any publication, you look at the cubicles, and there would be those good news notes pinned to people's walls because they were very proud to get them. And so it was that kind of encouragement, uh, the optimism. He was this guy who believed that uh, the future was bright, no matter how gloomy things could get. He never became a pessimist. The glass wasn't half full for him. It was always full. Um, his signature phrase at the end of every meeting, at the end of every gathering, he would say to people, the best is yet to come. And, you know, these things maybe sound corny, but you would believe the power that they they would have over an employee base. It's amazing, really inspiring. And I also read that Bill Gates said that through his work at IDG, Patrick McGovern shaped the way that millions of people grew to understand the enormous potential of computers and how they would change the world. So he was also known for being a caring and thoughtful boss, two, two traits that extended to his generous philanthropy too. But what lessons do you think we can learn from this legendary leader and his legacy? I think that you can take away... Um, a whole bunch of things. It would be pretty impossible to just sum it up in a couple of sentences. But I think at the essence of it, there is a desperate need in this world for sharing information, for understanding things, for understanding each other. God knows we need this more than ever right now, certainly in this country. And he felt strongly that technology, that computers, that research, by the way, he funded his Brain Research Institute at MIT to the tune of $350 million. He believed that by bringing this all out for people, letting people have access to information and to knowledge, 
that you bring, you connect people, you bring people together and people who know each other, people who can have a conversation, whether by email or text or by Skype or any other way, are less likely to fight with each other. So you, therefore you could hopefully eliminate war. You could hopefully eliminate conflict. And he, uh, and he honestly believed that. Maybe there was a little bit of naivete there, but you know, it's a pretty good goal when you think about it. And it's a pretty good legacy to leave behind. And that's, I think, at the essence of who he was. He really believed this and it was a powerful message. And I think we've only hinted around a few of the so many great stories about that great man and you're going in your book, obviously, Future Forward. So can you remind the listeners of where they can find out more information about the book and maybe even reach out to you if they've got any questions about our conversation today? Absolutely. Um, you know, we do have a website for the book. It's uh, futureforwardbook.com. So they can go to that website. There's um, some you know, great information there, a place you can order the book from Amazon there. You can go right to Amazon to, to order it anywhere in the world as well. Um, there's uh, a way to contact me to ask questions, to post uh, for listeners who actually knew Pat or worked for IDG and want to share their stories is a place for that. We'd love to hear from people. And uh, I'm happy to respond to people. So, yeah, contact me through the website. And um, uh, there's a little video where you, that I made to show – uh, a little bit about Pat, some of the photos that are in the book that you can see who he was and even hear his voice. And, uh, you know, it's it's we'd like to sort of create a, a community around this. There's so many ID thousands, literally, of uh, former IDG employees from uh, various publications all over the place. And uh, so this is an opportunity to really honor the legacy and to bring people back together to talk about it. And you need to be commended for doing just that because, I mean, Patrick McGovern shaped the way millions of people grew to, and how they grew to understand the enormous potential of computers and how they would change the world. And as we've talked about before as well how he was a caring and thoughtful boss and the eternal optimist. But I think it's quite beautiful how he never sought the spotlight at all. So he's created real change and made a real big difference and impact on the world but for all the right reasons and not the wrong reasons. It's something I think we could all aspire to do. So a big thank you for coming on and sharing that story today. Well, thank you, Neil. It's a great story. Um, should have been told a long time ago, but it's good to be told now. We sadly pat passed away in 2014, but his legacy will live on forever, I think. Like I said at the beginning of the show, McGovern turned IDG into a three billion technology, media and venture capital empire. And I loved hearing the stories of what a great man he was. How, And even as CEO, how all of his staff loved him. Maybe it was because he was the eternal optimist that put people and making a difference first. But the fact he kept himself in the shadows, is something quite beautiful about that, that you make a big difference and leave a long-lasting legacy behind without wanting to seek fame. So I don't want to reveal too many spoilers, but I do urge you, if you enjoy reading about inspirational stories, especially in the tech industry, check out Future Forward. It's a refreshing change to read about a good... It's such a refreshing change to read about a good man and a fantastic legacy, rather than a tech leader with a dark side. So Patrick McGovern and his legacy will live on in everyone who listened to this show today. And I know it will with me. But what about you listening? I'd love to hear your thoughts about everything you've just heard today. Please email me, techblogwriter at outlook.com. Tweet me at Neil C. Hughes. Alternatively, if you go to my website, techblogwriter.co.uk, you can leave me a voicemail there too. But wow, McGovern's story really blew me away today. I wish Glenn the best for the future with the book and for the incredible noble cause of ensuring that McGovern's legacy lives on. His conversation with me today certainly inspired me to want to be a better person. But hey, keep those messages coming in. Thanks for tuning in as always. And until next time, don't be a stranger. Thanks for listening to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast. Until next time, remember, technology is best when it brings people together.